Ishwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarveshwaraya Shambha Shambha Arul Parai 
Namaskaram, everybody. How are you today? <laughs> All of you on the web, you must tell me, how are you today? <clears throat> it's important that you're alive and you're well, that you must respond to that and always be grateful because uh, 
The sky need not open up, just a virus can kill you, just a microorganism. Why I'm saying this is, unfortunately, <clears throat> human beings have developed such a sense of entitlement. There are many reasons. One is that we're endowed with little more intellectual capability. I wouldn't say intelligence, intellectual capability than all the other creatures. We have technologies which give us enormous prowess. <laughs> you uh, don't need to be a very brave man to go and kill a tiger. From a kilometer away, you can shoot him dead and feel great about it. So, these things and above all, I think religions of the world have put this wrong idea into human head that all the other creatures are here to serve you, at least in some parts of religions. Some aspects of religion has put this idea into human mind. Every other creature wants to serve you, he is here to serve you. You are made in God's own image, all of them are just crea creatures who are here to serve you. Just uh, go to an ant and ask him, is he interested in serving you? Well, if you're not getting the point, go and ask the elephant. You will get the point <laughs> very well. Nobody is here to serve you. For them, their life means a lot. Uh, for an ant, ant's life is everything. For a grasshopper, grasshopper's life is everything. For a tree, its life is everything. For every creature, its life is important. This is how life is enshrined in every one of them, including ourselves, of course. Well, the nature of life is such, if one has to live, another has to die. It's the only way. If the virus has to live, we have to die. If we have to live, they have to die. This is how it is, everything is enmeshed into each other. The whole food cycle in the world is made in such a way, if one animal has to live, it has to eat something else, plant or animal. And if that another animal has to live, it has to eat that one and it's a chain. So this is a sustainable chi chain of food cycle. <laughs> Forever you can carry on like this. But now uh, we have skewed it very strongly. We think in our favor, but uh, may not work in our favor long term if we go like this. This stupid sense of entitlement that every other creature is here to serve us, this must be banished out of human mind, it's very important. If we want to do well in future, it's very important to understand that every creature has its rightful place in creation and all of them are very vital for our survival and well-being. <clears throat> there is a uh, lot of research showing this, that They are saying that if all the worms disappear, the world will end in about one and a half years' time. In eighteen months' time, all life on this planet will end if all the worms disappear right now. If all the insects disappear, in four to four and a half years' time, the world will end as we know it. If all the microbes disappear right now, right now we are fighting the virus, but let's say all the microorganisms disappear right now, 
everything will die right now, including us. But if all the human beings disappear, the world will flourish. So we must understand what is the significance of our existence on this planet. Unfortunately, this has been hugely exaggerated in human minds. God made us in his own image. He looks just like us. <laughs> like me. Because of that, we have an entitlement that we can do what we want with every other creature. Well, for the sake of survival, if we did kill something, that's a different matter. But we've been killing for this... for the... for our pleasure. Probably, or really, the only creature on this planet who kills for pleasure is the human being. None of the others kill for pleasure, they kill for survival. So, this sense of entitlement has cost us... cost the life on this planet enormously. As it costs other life a lot, our lives will slowly become miserable. Well, I was just now talking to a group of over uh, nearly hundred thousand doctors online. And I was... they asked me, Sadhguru, what is your perspective of this virus? Why do you think it's come? Has it come to teach us a lesson? Well, I... I'm not made like this when somebody is suffering, ah, oh, this is a lesson for you. <laughs> right now you are either infected or you lost somebody who is dear to you. Uh, and there are so many other kinds of losses. This is not the time to tell you, this is a lesson, God is teaching you a lesson. All the religious nuts are already on, saying God is teaching us a lesson. No, nobody is teaching us a lesson. It is very natural that in a seesaw, if you go down like this out of your weight, after some time, somebody will press it that side and it'll go back like this. There is always a seesaw of life happening. Nature has always maintained its balance. Sometimes it gets skewed, but again it tries to bounce back. Now, uh, suppose you were a virus, okay? I want you to just imagine. You, it's a very empowering thought. <laughs> suppose you were the virus. And let's say you were living in all wild animals, pangolins and bats and whatever else. The population of wild animals has come down significantly. In the last fifty years, seventy percent drop in the mammals, in the vertebrates rather, not even mammals, in the vertebrate population of wild creatures has come down by seventy percent. When our population has gone up <laughs> in a crazy way. So suppose you were a virus living in pangolins and they're dying and dying. Your territory or your terrain or habitat is shrinking. Would you not enterprise yourself, venture yourself to find a new creature to inhabit? Would you not? I'm asking you. Definitely you would. Maybe that's all they're doing. They were happy with their pangolins for many centuries or millions of years, I don't know how long. But now there's no habitat, it's going away. They have to adapt. They have to find new territory. When life in Europe and UK became very crushed at one time, they became desperate to find new lands. They found America, Australia, whatever else. Well, going to new territory could mean death. A whole lot of people lost their lives just trying to get there. And uh, many, many other people died after getting there. But still people kept going because finding new habitat became very important because where you were it was overcrowded and no place to live, no opportunity. So even risking your life, you went there. That is all in a way virus is doing. I'm not talking about virology, I'm talking the simple sense of any life. Any life will operate like this, that if its habitat is taken away, it will try to 
encroach into new habitat. So right now we are just new habitat. I know in the social media, a whole lot of people went crazy when I said, uh, the virus has no intention of killing you, it's trying to make a living, all right? But he lives with full force. Because he lives with such force, you die. If you were as strong as a pangolin, or at least if you were a bat, then uh, you would be happy, virus would be happy. But you are not built like the other creatures, so it's hitting you in a certain way. Well, if there were some other population other than human populations, maybe they would have gone there. But in their wisdom, they have understood the only thriving population right now is human population constantly expanding. So they have made the right choice. Well, this may sound insulting to you, but this is how life functions. This is how even we function when our survival is threatened, isn't it? So, facing the present situation with social distancing, with medical care, all this is fine. But long-term existence on this planet, we have to come to terms with this, that this planet was made for all the creatures, all the life, and they were here before us, and they will be here after us. Yes. So they have as much right to exist here. See? See, they are all agreeing with me. They have as much right to be here as you have. Of course, you also have a right to be here, but not above them. You are not entitled in such a way that God has given you such a position that you, every other creature is here to serve you. Then such a God has no clue about how this planet works. He must choose another planet to be a god there. On this planet, this is how life is structured. It is all enmeshed into each other. Only in the well-being of all life, there is well-being for everybody. If we remove any one dimension of life, then there will be a serious uh, collapse of life on all levels. So, this entitlement or sense of entitlement must go. Maybe God looks like a grasshopper. How do you know? Why not? Just has to be big, I'm saying. So in this culture, <laughs> we gave all kinds of shapes and forms to what we consider as divine. Just to bring this home to you, even a mouse is worshipped, a snake is worshipped, very important, very important because if you do not understand the significance of a mouse and a snake and a bird and an animal and a tree, well, you are heading for a disaster. There's no question about it. But this sense of being I'm super life over every other life, this sense of entitlement has to go this is a good time for realization. This is very funny, the world works like this. This happened, a Russian man came to California and he met a foreman, you know, he looked for a job and he got into a construction site and uh, the foreman asked him, in Russia, how many hours a week do you work? He said, uh, we work seventy hours a week. Oh, really? Here we work only forty hours. But why is it, why you guys can't work seventy hours, he asked. I'm willing to work seventy hours, why can't you guys work? Oh, here all the labor, they're bloody communists. 
In a communist country, they will work. Everywhere else, the same people will always fight to work less and less and less. Suddenly, they will get entitled, always, trying to take advantage of everything. This has become the human way. No. By being the most evolved creature, we must be a little more magnanimous to every other life. See, <clears throat> if you are positioned in a, a place of height, of some altitude, you must have a different sense of dignity and concern for everything. You don't expect an ant to be concerned about all life. You expect a human being to be. But because this kind of rubbish has been taught to them, that every other life is here to serve you, you can kill anything and wantonly do whatever you want. Because of this, uh, we will get a certain amount of pain. And it's come, unfortunately, in this form. But uh, this also, uh, do not take me wrong, this is a bad thing because of its speed of uh, contagiousness. It spreads very quickly. But fortunately, its, uh, its ability to kill is low compared to the things we've seen in the past. The bubonic plagues used to just clean out whole villages and towns at one time. The Spanish flu killed over fifty million people across the world. Fifty million, nearly infected one-third of the world's population at that time, over five hundred million people. But at that time there was no air travel, people were not this mobile. In spite of that, it happened like that. Compared to those things, this is a good virus. I know I go I'm going to be in a lot of trouble calling the virus a good virus, Compared to the virulence of those things, this is a mild one. But it spreads quickly. But the advantage is, we are the carriers. If we want, we can stop it. If something else was the carrier, if the ants were carrying it, if the mice were carrying it, if the birds were carrying it, you couldn't stop them. But we are the carriers, so we can stop them. But uh, the human beings are in such a state of confusion, slowly they're getting a little more organized. Fortunately, in India, both the citizenship, the administration and the medical uh, fraternity is responding in a fantastic manner except a few idiots who are there. Most of the population, medical fraternity and the administration, the political leadership, everybody, boom! I think if we have to rate nations in terms of response in a democratic nation where you cannot use too much force, I think we've done the best in the world right now. For 1.4 billion people, less than 300 fatalities is a fantastic report card. But it could rise in the next one or two weeks. So, uh, it's almost certain the lockdown will continue for another two weeks. So, uh, those of you who are in the yoga center and those of you who are in the online uh, with us for the darshan, we are all now hamtum. <laughs> another two weeks <laughs> So. This is... this is a time for us to show what kind of human beings we are. This is a time that we can enhance ourselves as individual human beings. Because there is no such thing as enhancing a society, because society is just a word, nation is just a word, world is just a word, it is just individual human beings. Without transforming individual human beings, there is no transformation in the world. So, right now there is a break like this. This is the time 
all of you, at least focus on this much, every one of you, and tell everybody else that you know. Ten percent improvement, okay? I'm not asking you to suddenly become something else and grow a halo around your head. Ten percent improvement, just list out your physical fitness, where are you? Ten percent improvement must happen by the end of April. Your mental capabilities, where are you? Ten percent improvement. Whatever work you're doing in your life, you're cooking, you're making tea, you're running the country, you're doing whatever, ten percent improvement. If you're... if you're running just a tea shop, if your tea becomes ten percent better than the way it is right now, oh, you will do very well post-virus. Ten percent better in everything, physically, mentally, emotionally, and in terms of your competence of whatever you're doing, every one of you, just do this because you'll never again get this in your lifetime. But I would recommend, I would de recommend that like all the schools break for six weeks in summer or eight weeks or whatever, I think the entire humanity should take a break for three weeks every year. No... no machines, no industry, no cars and no automobiles in the road. If you want, you can cycle, you can walk, you can trek, but no technology, non-polluting technology you can use, computers and stuff, but no smoke, spewing machines, industry, nothing, just for three weeks. I think after a few years of knowing the benefit of that, people will vote for six weeks. They will. We should think about it. Why should virus force us to do it? This time around, well, we got the bright idea from them. But I think we should do it. Everybody, the entire humanity focuses on how to enhance themselves at least ten percent. Just imagine every year if everybody upgrades themselves ten percent, in ten years' time, what kind of world we will be living in? Hmm? We'll be living in a fantastic world, really enhanced human beings, physically, mentally, emotionally. You must write down, all of you do this, physically where is your, you know, parameters? What is it that you can do? Ten percent increase, what does it mean? Your mental state, where are you? Describe yourself, you don't have to show it to anybody. And say, ten percent increase, what, uh, upgrade, what does it mean? Emotionally, where are you? How much sweetness do you have in you? Or how much bitterness you have in you? How to make a ten percent positive upgrade? In terms of your work, where are you in terms of your capabilities? How to enhance yourself ten percent? Oh, in ten years' time, what a wonderful world we'll have. We should do this. In the... in the yoga center, we always have this for people that people, brahmacharis are going into sixty days of silence in a year. Sixty days. This is for enhancement of the individual person because if you are not enhanced, how will your work be enhanced? How will the world be enhanced? People are always asking me this question, Sadhguru, how is it without any qualifications, without any... any kind of thing, everything runs so smoothly in Isha. How is it that they're performing like this? Your events are, you know, top of the line. How does this happen? Because we are focusing on individual human beings and their enhancement. This is what the world needs to do, this is what the country needs to do. This is a viral lesson, it must go viral. But people are doing, uh, you know, please look at your lives and see how much of it is precise. Your thought, your emotion, your action, to what extent is it precise and purposeful? It's all over the place, you know. 
and still you're managing to do something wonderful in your life. <laughs> that is why everybody keeps looking up, because they know they're an accidental success. This has become common everywhere, everybody like this because they're an accident. No, it's very important human beings are a conscious and precise and pur purposeful existence. This happened. A young woman was driving and the car went like this, like that, like that. Another man who was driving did everything possible to dodge that car but it came and rammed into him. Well, fortunately both were not injured in any big way. So he got down, went to her and said, whatever you wanted to do, you could have at least indicated, you know? You could have given some kind of a signal, what is it that you are planning to do? She said, uh, there is no signal for what I wanted to do. For a lot of people it's like this, there is no signal for what they want to do because they don't know what the hell they want to do. It's time to figure this out. Three weeks a year should be good enough time to figure this out. We can chart out a kind of a process, you know, 112 different processes for 112 different types of people on the planet. What is the simple things you can do in three weeks? to enhance yourself physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually and in terms of your competence of whatever you're doing. People are telling me, Sadhguru, uh, you know, people who ate what I cooked, they're saying, Sadhguru, you must run cooking lessons in this break. I'm also thinking but... Time-wise, uh, it'll take too much time. <laughs> Let's make this happen. Well, we got three more weeks now, almost, at least. So use this time, let's use this time to really enhance ourselves at least ten percent on all levels of our life. Let's make this happen. Hmm? Questions, please. This question is from Ashwin. Namaskaram Sadhguru. Mm -hmm. You had mentioned in one of the darshan that Isha volunteers are going out to nearby villages and spreading awareness about coronavirus. I am based out of Mumbai and I cannot come there, but I really want to contribute in ensuring that our rural villagers stay safe. Please let me know how I can help from home. See, right now the number of people that we have to serve is just increasing, especially with this uh, extended lockdown, I think the number of people who will become vulnerable and helpless to help themselves in lockdown period is going to increase significantly. Right now, our volunteers in the region are uh, serving a certain number of people cooked meals. So this cooked meal requirement may increase quite significantly in the next uh, week to two weeks' time. As you know, we can postpone everything, but we can't postpone our lunch and dinner. We may not be able to provide them what they would normally eat, at least two meals a day we are seeing how to provide. For this, the necessary infrastructure and physical infrastructure, human infrastructure and the groceries needed, vegetables needed, this procurement is happening on a war footing. And uh, <laughs> I've already appealed to you, I don't want to appeal to you every day, but we need money. Unfortunately, we need a lot of money because only then we can serve lots of people. As uh, I announced yesterday, the number of, uh, you know, whatever, N95 masks and gloves and those uh, UV mm, sanitization lights, all these things are are landing here, I think today they've already come. Plus more things are coming from China for that... I think that part is reasonably well taken care of, at least for this region, because we are seeing how to be active in this region so that we are an effective force rather than spreading ourselves all over. At the same time, 
in the television show uh, with the Times Now, I have announced a help... Uh, a, a number that they can call. 83000, is a number which is Isha Helpline, that people can send messages if they see anybody moving towards starvation, that their basic nourishment is in question, wherever it is in this country, they can send a message and within twenty-four hours we will respond, activating the volunteers in that region <clears throat> All... all this uh, needs, you know, a certain amount of uh, financial support to make this happen. Uh, my painting is almost complete. I think tomorrow the photographs of it uh, should come out and uh, if you... if you have the money to buy a painting, you can buy it. We will also... we'll sell the original and we will also sell the copies. Because the original is five by five, everybody may not have this... that much wall in their house. So, uh, we will sell the copies which are a little smaller also. So, and we hope to do more. If necessary, I will teach you some cooking, I will do any damn thing. All our volunteers are working at various levels within the limitations of social distancing. So, because of this, we cannot really go out and do what we would have done otherwise, because we want to respect the laws and above all, to be an inspiration for everybody to respect that in that sense. But we want to create various things through which funds can be raised. We are looking at other projects through which funds can be raised, so that in this period, it's my commitment that people should not die of starvation. The virus is taking its toll. That is not in our hands, that is in the hands of the medical personnel. Not making... not inundating medical infrastructure with too many infected people is the responsibility of every citizen and administration is enforcing it. And largely they're following these rules and it's going well. But now in the next two weeks it may ramp up a little bit, we need to take care of it. One negative in all this is, which is of a serious concern, in South Korea and also probably in China, People who got infected and got recovered and came negative uh, about a few weeks ago are again testing positive now. This is a serious concern. This is unforeseen or did not... we hoped that this won't happen. Largely people believed once you're infected you would have the antibodies to fight this and you will become kind of immune. Your immune system will take care of you. But uh, secondary infection is happening in people, which is a serious, serious concern. So when will this cycle stop? We thought it will go up at a certain level of infection and then it'll go down. But now the same people who came out of infection are going back into it. Now this is a very serious complication because we don't know where this will lead. So, how to get back the economic activity in the country, that work is going on. We are seeing how to involve ourselves with the local farming community to see how to put them back on rails. I don't know what was announced, I think by now, Prime Minister should be announcing. Those of you who have televisions, you may be seeing it, that uh, there may be some relaxation in the lockdown. One important relaxation, which is a submission that I had also made during our conversation with him, that agriculture sector must be relaxed with the necessary instructions for social distancing. Generally, agriculture activity, the nature of it itself, there is a social distancing. There is no crowding of people except for a few activities which can be easily uh, spaced out. Agriculture activity must get into action because that is sixty percent of the population in the country, plus it is the food security for the nation for the next one year. So that has to get back. Maybe they will relax some other uh, essential services also, mm, making a few more supply chains a little more efficient. 
I think that's going to happen too. But uh, the railways and um, airlines are not going to function, function for sure for the next... Uh, till the end of this month, one hundred percent. That's not going to happen because they are the main carriers to long distance spreading. So travel will be restricted, maybe they will do taluk level uh, restrictions, district level restrictions so that people don't move. Geographically they stay within their terrain if they get it, if they get infected it stays in the localized way so that it can be treated better rather than people traveling freely all over the place. So all these things are being done, citizens must cooperate and uh, for you to contribute right now, if you are in Mumbai, you don't have to travel and come here to serve. The best thing is uh, to contribute in whichever way possible, otherwise many of you can set up your own platforms of contributions and if you collect that and send it to us, this will be put to good use hundred percent. We will assure you every rupee that you send will be put to good use and uh, that's all we can do right now. I think we've gone over the time. Uh, thank you very much and this is the time because now the extension of uh, lockdown has happened which is another twenty-one days mm, or yeah, still twenty-one days more from today or twenty days more probably. Uh, conducting this time responsibly for the well-being of everybody around us, protecting that vulnerable group, protecting the aged people, ensuring that everybody who is over sixty-five, seventy years of age must live through this virus. This commitment all of us should take, behaving responsibility, responsibly, ensuring their safety and well-being. And infants below one year of age and those other people who are vulnerable for different medical reasons also. And uh, ensuring this doesn't become a great calamity, but just an aberration in our lives which we successfully came out of. Let's be the virus successfully. So. Yoga, Yoga, Yogeshwaraya Bhuta 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 Shwaraya Kala 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 Shwaraya Shiva Shiva Sarveshwaraya Shambho Shambho Maha